And this guy says, I'm a Mormon and you're not. And, uh, you know, you're an evangelical, so am I going to hell? And I looked at him and I said, you know, I'm going to answer that question the same way I would answer it if I was looking at a Jehovah's Witness, a Catholic, a fundamental Baptist, a Lutheran. I don't care. Fill in the blank. I don't care what your tradition is. I don't care what you believe about other things. It doesn't matter because the answer is always the same. I don't care what you are. If you can look me in the eye, this is the way I said it to him, if you can look me in the eye and say to me that my hope for salvation, the forgiveness of my sins, my hope for eternal life, is based entirely on what Jesus did on the cross, and I bring no merit at all to the issue, no works, no performance, nothing. If I can say that I believe that exclusively what Jesus did on the cross is, is how my sins are forgiven and my hope of eternal life. If you can look me in the eye and say that, you're in. If you can't, you're not. That's just the way it is. The question is, upon what are you basing forgiveness of sins and eternal life? It has nothing to do with merit at all. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not completely sure, but I think I can say that. And at that point, I'm not going to look at the guy and say, well, you must be a liar because you're a Mormon. No, I'm going to look at the guy and think, I sure hope so, because that's the gospel. That's what you need to focus on. You know, maybe next year we can have some theological discussion, but this is the question today. And the, and the question and the answer is going to be the same no matter who you are. I don't care what you are. Can you say this or not? Now, as far as the email, here's part of what I wrote back. Dear XYZ, the fact that you're not sure whether you'll lose your salvation over a divorce and remarriage makes me wonder if you understand the gospel. Salvation cannot be earned. It was extended to sinners, not to people in the process of cleaning up their act. Romans 5.8. Consequently, that which cannot be earned by moral perfection, okay, salvation is not of works, and we're, not, we're never going to be perfect, so it's, all, it's totally out of reach. That which cannot be earned by moral perfection cannot be lost by moral imperfection. And to bring it down to the divorce, salvation wasn't earned by getting married, so it cannot be lost by getting divorced and remarried. Okay, Christ didn't die for you while you were in the process of cleaning up your life while you were in the process of learning to articulate the hypostatic union and the depth of the incarnation. Okay. He ain't waiting around for that. He died for you while you were yet a sinner. That's it. Period. Exclamation point, really. That's what you need to grasp. And again, I know Christians who just struggle with this. No different than me, no different than anybody else who, you know, who you know, has sort of come to grips with what grace is. But that's what it is. It doesn't mean, oh, you know, now I can go out and sin all I want because God you know, died for me while I was yet a sinner and he loves me. What, what did Paul say to that very question? God forbid. Okay, you're missing the point, dude. That's my paraphrase of what he says in Romans there. The gospel isn't here so that you can keep on sinning. The gospel is what it is so that you know it is not performance-based. You can be at your worst and Christ still died for you. That's what it's for. It's not to give you permission to do something, you know, something weird. So again, I, I think this is, this is something we really need to grasp.